Kurtamendi is the gateway to Odense, capital of Denmark's island of Funen, and birthplace of Hans Christian Andersen. little shops across the street from the Anderson Museum. This is the house where he was born, which is next door to the museum. Inside the museum, part of his library. Note my reflection. Some of his own drawings made for his own children's books. A life-size painting. The exit is watched over by this life-size statue. This street is exactly as it was on April 2nd, 1805, when he was born. St. Canude's 13th century church replaced the wooden church of St. Alban, where Canude was murdered. The popular mode of transportation in Denmark. Dan's new city hall, alongside of which Ruth and our guide are in deep conversation. The centuries-old section of the city hall still is in constant use. This plaque commemorates the bravery of bygone warriors who defended against the Swedes. Bullet holes still show in the walls. Inside, some modernistic sculpturing is on display. Driving through the lovely countryside on our way to Egesav Castle. Agasov boasts some beautiful gardens. considerable time here and were very well rewarded. This is the old stable. to the old castle. This original castle was built in 1552 and is now owned by Count Gregor Alfelt Billier. No relation to the original builder, Franz Brockenhurst. All 
Baldy Gardens were originated in about 1730 and are practically the same today as then. are straight or block shaped and kept well trimmed. They are so thick one cannot see through them. The Renaissance garden is of formal design and directly in front of the castle entrance. is entirely surrounded by a well-filled moat. The Count did not invite us to lunch, so we had to eat in the stables with the rest of the commoners and peacocks. After lunch, we wandered through the informal Baroque gardens. to the castle of Danahoff, built in 1170 and the oldest castle in Scandinavia. Ducks enjoy the now peaceful waters of the moat. house built with handmade bricks, some of the first ever made. Only two of the original buildings are intact. The rest of the castle was destroyed by the Swedes in 1659. gate at Nyborg could be closed to undesirables. Too bad some of our cities are not so built nowadays. Mm -hmm. 
Returning to Curtamendi, we stop briefly to see this estate of Baron Lysingor. Quite an impressive barn. Seems like our guide and my wife got along very well. We arrive back at Curtamendi and boarding the tender receive several goodbyes by local cadets and citizenry. breakwater, a welcome sight greets the eyes of two weary touristas. The following morning, we arrive at Gujem, meaning God's home. It's a small fishing village on the Danish island of Bornholm in the Baltic Sea, about 35 miles southeast of Sweden. take us into the little harbor and we immediately start a walking tour in the rain through this interesting little town known for its famed smoked herring called born homers. The narrow steep streets are lined with doll-like painted houses in various pastel shades. The ever-present delicious Danish pastry Watch closely in the next scene and note the piggyback rider. Gujum is a popular summer resort. This day is no exception. To the top of one of the hills, we get an interesting view of the town. They call this level the Boat Cool, which is a popular spot for artists. top of the boat cool stood this little old church. And the pastor's little yellow house. The Jansen Hotel, which looks out over the harbor. We walk back to the lower street level and over to the waterfront, where the gulls concentrate near the herring smokehouses.
going through one of the smokehouses, we get a close-up of the barn homers, also the wood used for smoking them. Wherever there is smoky flavor, you generally find smoke. On the way back to the dock, we pause to see some Danish cups and saucers on display. From the dock, a last good view of the main street. A little boy and his proud daddy wish us goodbye. And we hurry back to the ship to eat our born homers. Next stop, Gothenburg, Sweden, where we refuel. Gothenburg was founded in 1621. In 1638, two sailing vessels set out from here for America, where they established the colony of New Sweden, which is now Wilmington, Delaware. A descendant of these first Swedish Americans, John Martin, was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. On the pier were greeted by two pretty girls who gave out information about Gothenburg. Gothenburg, as the Swedes call it. Our bus was waiting, and our pretty guide made us welcome. First stop was Gustavus Adolphus Torg, or Square, with its statue of the city's founder. To Gustavus' right is the law court and town hall. City views on our way to the Lunda Drag, a seaside resort. Retired seamen and their wives were being given a week's Christmas vacation during July by the government. Christmas tree and all. are lazier than seagulls. On our way back to the city, we're shown this new housing project, low rent. Then we are taken to Gouda Platson, dominated by this famous Poisidon fountain by Carl Millis. At 
the end of the plaza is the art gallery containing fine collections of old masters and also some moderns. This is the city theater to the northeast of the Poissydown Fountain. A mural in the foyer of the concert theater, which is across the plaza from the city theater. This is looking at the outside of the concert theater where we were treated to an organ recital. Looking towards town from the square. Adolphus Square, we wander around and get a few pictures of the downtown section. Scandinavia is no place for anyone on a diet. Back again at Adolphus Square, we wander down some side streets. Coastal 
cities, Gatorborg has its canals also. decided to wait for a bus to take us back to the ship. From the bus, we get a good picture of a Swedish policeman. Near the dock was the Maritime Museum and Seaman's Tower, with the statue of a seaman's woman looking out to sea. As the sun sets on Gothenburg, we head for Karlskrona, the Swedish naval base. We reach Karlskrona on July 22nd, about 5.30 p.m., and are welcomed by the Navy Band. This base was built in 1680. Buses take us first to the Admiralty Church with its poor box fashioned in the figure of an old bearded man holding a sign. The sign said, Humbly I ask, though weak my voice may be, come, lift my hat and give a coin to me. Blessed is he who taketh care of the poor. This old church was erected in 1685, built of wood and beautifully preserved. Inside view of its lovely old organ. Next stop is the Navy Museum. At the head of the stairs is a large royal crest. on display a good many delicately carved old wooden figureheads from Swedish men of war of the 17th to 19th centuries. the museum is a large gilded crest taken from an old ship. Daylight is starting to wane along about 8 p.m. as we're taken to Store Torget, the town square, where on one side is the Round Frederick Church, on another the post office with a statue of Charles XI in the foreground. the old town hall. Both the church and town hall date from the late 17th century. This hotel just across the street helped ease our parched throats while waiting for some Swedish folk dancers. The crowd assembles in the square to the tune of vital lens. Across from us, we note our friends, the Sanfords, also getting uncomfortable from the cold, damp evening air. The dancers arrive too late to photograph, and we return to our ship in this reflected afterglow, and soon left for the island of Gutland. Next morning,